Summer is at its peak in the plains of India. Temperatures of over 40 degrees centigrade have scorched the land. Most of the water streams have dried up or shrunk into small puddles. Midday heat has forced most of the animals to scurry for shade. It has been a tough morning for Spotty. It often is for a tiger mom. She needs to bring food back to her babies, but the hunt has left her exhausted and thirsty. There is a small water hole just a few yards ahead. Leaving her kill hidden behind the bushes, she wearily makes her way to the water. A lone deer is quenching his thirst at the pond. A distant alarm call alerts him to an incoming danger. The minute he sees a tiger, he instantly turns tail to run. But Spotty has not come here for him. She's come for the water. Waving her way in, she gently begins to sip letting the water cool her overheated body. The other animals will have to wait for their turn. They know that this is her kingdom. It is a relief to be cooling off in the water, but Spotty cannot stay here too long. She must get back home to her cubs. Reluctantly, she starts to make her way back. Finally, the coast is clear for the Langu.
Spotty has ruled over this patch of the jungle for over a year now. It was not easy gaining control over such prime location. But her need was urgent. She had to secure a safe area to raise her daughters. Her mate, Mungu, is a fierce, battle-hardened warrior. The unchallenged king of these parts. Many have tried to oust him, but failed. Together, Mungu and Spotty can raise a line of powerful cubs. But Mungu is of no help to Spotty when it comes to raising a family. Male tigers never are. They rarely interact with their family. The females are left to raise the cubs entirely on their own. Since the cubs were born, Mungu occasionally visits these parts, but there is no emotional family get-together here. Spotty watches him warily, keeping her distance. the cubs remain safely out of sight till he has left. They know Mungu is here to reassert his domination over the area, rather than to check on them. Though Mungu may be around to ward off rival males, he will not intervene should a rival female come encroaching. After all, he may want to mate with her too. Spotty is essentially a single mother. Her cubs are now almost a year old. They may look big, but they still depend on Spotty for food and protection. They have not yet mastered the skills needed to survive in the harsh jungle environment on their own. Spotty controls the most coveted area in the entire national park. This is one of the few patches of the forest where the water streams do not completely dry out during the summer. Other tigresses would give anything to snatch it from her. So far, she has managed to ward off all the challengers. Failure is not an option. She would be exiled from her home. And her children will suffer an even worse fate. They would be killed. She must shield them from danger. And also keep them well fed. The small deer she killed this morning will not be enough between the three of them. She will soon have to hunt again. But it is too hot right now. She will have to try again at night. For now, it is time for a siesta. The cubs are also resting a few hundred yards away.
It is not just the tiger family that is trying to escape the summer heat. The entire forest has gone quiet. But there is one predator in the area who is on the alert. He is looking to take advantage of the heat and swoop on a sleepy prey. A little earlier in the day, he had been sizing up a pair of pheasants. The peacock might have been too big, but the peahen might be just what he needs. An accomplished predator, he makes quick work of the hunt. Getting this plum kill to his tree will be something of a struggle. But he can certainly feast while he's here. The ruins of an ancient fort keep guard on the dense tropical forests of this central Indian tiger reserve. The protection given to tigers here has also helped other wild species to flourish in these sal forests. Large patches of grasslands line its valleys, providing food and shelter to a large variety of deer and other herbivores. This abundance of prey has helped the tigers flourish in these parts. As the afternoon wears off and temperatures cool, slowly the animals start to come out of hiding for an evening meal. While the elders gather food, a bunch of juvenile ngu monkeys are busy in fun and games, oblivious to danger. For evening is also time for Spotty to make a move. She leaves her daughters safely hidden in the grass. As the hours pass, the cubs get restless, full of energy and curiosity. They want to explore. One of them peeps out. The coast seems to be clear. Soon enough, the other cub follows. The langur monkeys in the area set off the alarm. And all the animals in the area are now on the alert. A gaur grazing nearby keeps a wary eye on the sisters. Initially hesitant, the cubs remain hidden in the grass. But they are hungry, and there is no sight of mum. After a while, the bolder of the sisters decides to make a move. For all her bravado, she knows the gower is too big for her to take on. But the herd of deer grazing a few hundred meters away looks promising. Maybe she can hunt on her own. After all, they have seen their mother do it countless times. 
she begins to stalk. She creeps forward inch by inch. The tall grass keeps her well hidden from the deer. She knows that she must get within striking distance to the deer unseen, or they will outrun her easily. Sudden movements will catch the deer's eyes. This one is already uneasy. Maybe the slight breeze has brought a whiff of the tiger. The cub is still hidden from his view, so he cannot be sure. Startled to find the tiger so near, the deer stands frozen to the ground for a few seconds. But just as the cub gets ready to make her move, an alarm call from a fellow deer rings out. And then he takes off. She chases after him, but gives up quickly. She knows she will never be able to catch the deer in an open foot race. Hunting is not as easy as she thought. Mum really has to work hard to bring food for them each time. A lesson she will do well to remember. Fortunately for her, Mother has succeeded in bringing down another deer. She takes a few bites for herself first. Hunter's privilege. But perhaps she ate a little too fast. The two kills will keep the family well fed for a couple of days. Spotty can take a breather for now. A few hundred miles away, in the Indian heartland, lie the fabled jungles said to have inspired Rudyard Kipling's Jungle Book. Easy to see why. Look around. Almost all the legendary characters are hard to miss. Mist-covered mornings, slowly giving way to sun-kissed meadows. Truly, nature's paradise. But things are far from idyllic for the young tiger mom, Neelam. A few months ago, she gave birth to three cubs. It is a daily struggle to keep them alive. So far, she has managed to keep them hidden from the outside world tucked away in a thick patch of bushes. Like Spotty, Neelam too must hunt for the entire family if they are to survive. And that means leaving them alone and defenseless. But unlike Spotty, 
Neelam does not have the protection of the Cum's father. He was killed a few weeks back by a rival male, Titu. That has rocked Neelam's happy world. Her cubs are now in grave danger. If Titu discovered the cubs and Neelam's hideout, he would not spare them. Male tigers will kill the cubs of any other male they see. This serves a twin purpose. Elimination of any future challengers. And more importantly, forcing the mother to mate with them. Neelam lost her last litter in a similar fashion killed by a rival male. Even if a male tiger does not help raise his cubs, his protection is crucial to their survival. Keeping hold of their territory and the females is a constant challenge for a male tiger. On average, a tiger will only manage to keep control for a few years. Someone younger and stronger is always around to end their reign. Titu knows his newfound domination will not last long. He must make the most of his time. He is on the lookout for a mate to sire his own dynasty. The mating game is not an easy one to play in the animal kingdom. Titu is not the only one struggling. This peacock has been trying to woo a female for the past half an hour. No amount of strutting around has fetched him even a second glance from the disinterested peahen. The big stag here has also not met with any success so far. Having chased off a rival male, he might have been forgiven for thinking that his work was done. but the female is leading him on a merry dance. This pair of sloth bear perhaps are having a more amicable relationship. Titu might not be winning the mating game yet but at least he is making good on the hunt. Next morning, he finishes off the deer and sets on his morning patrol. High up on a nearby tree, a pair of vultures keep track of his movements. They begin to swoop down on the remains of a kill he had made a couple of days earlier. Out muscling the crows, they make a quick meal. The 
crows will finish off whatever little is left after the vultures have had their feast. Together, they recycle and remove all the rotting waste from the jungle. Titu, in the meanwhile, is single-mindedly marking every inch of his new territory. He wants to make sure any rivals know that this is his kingdom. In fact, every animal around these parts has already made a note of his domination. All of them make sure to remain hidden and out of sight as he patrols around his kingdom. But not before sounding the alarm. They may not be the same species, but these animals do rely on one another to stay alive in the brutal jungle. So the langurs or the birds perched up high give off an early warning to the deer on the ground, who cannot yet see the tiger approaching. This early warning is what keeps the deer alive. And once the deer start the alarm, they continue to call till the tiger has disappeared from their area. This alarm system follows the tiger all along his path. It is not easy even for the top predator to hunt. But today, the deer alarm works to the advantage of another tiger. Neelam has also heard the alarm. She had been relaxing and trying to enjoy the afternoon. But hearing the call, she instantly gets up and gathers all her babies and disappears into the bushes. Just in time. A few minutes later, Titu walks past the area, barely a few feet away from their hiding spot. How long can she continue to evade his grasp? <coughs> Titu is not the only threat that Neelam faces. The area adjoining her hideout is under the control of her sister. That might sound like a good thing, but it's not. Once you leave your mother's protection, each tiger sibling is on their own. It is a harsh world out there. Often sisters fight and kill each other to control a prized territory. Neelam inherited her mother's area when she died. For her sister, this meant leaving and establishing a domain for herself. Since then, the two have managed to hold a truce. But Neelam knows her sister is still resentful. She would not hesitate to enact revenge on the spoiled tigress or her cubs, should she get the chance. Right now, Nowhere is really safe for Neelam. The odds are truly stacked against her cubs. It is simply by the dint of her will that Neelam has kept them alive so far. This fierce determination of tigresses like Neelam and Spotty have kept the Indian tiger numbers growing.
the largest of the world's cats. The tigers once ruled the jungles across 30 countries worldwide. A century ago, there were more than 100,000 tigers. But now, nearly 4,000 of them are left in the wild. Large-scale destruction of their habitat and poaching have seen them disappear from over 90% of their historic home range. India, with nearly 70% of the world's total population of tigers, is perhaps the last hope for the long-term survival of this species. While Neelam continues to fight for her children, another tigress has sadly already lost the battle. A few hundred miles up north, in the foothills of the Himalayas, lies the oldest tiger reserve in the world. It is late summer now. The early morning sun is already warming the land. Oblivious to her surroundings, a tigress slowly makes her way across the cobbled riverbank. She is Parwali, the legendary queen of these parts. But right now, she is a grieving mother. Despite her best efforts, Parwali lost her only cub a few nights ago. Almost a year old, her male cub was killed by another male tiger, probably in an effort to force Parwali to mate with him. As she wades across, buffeted by the strong water currents, her grief is evident. Parwali was almost there. Her cub was a year old. Another six months or so, and he would have been ready to face the world on his own. He might then have stood a fighting chance. But fate is cruel. Last year, Parwali lost another cub in a similar manner. She has truly gone through great hardship. She lives in an area where the number of tigers has increased significantly in recent years. A great conservation success for the park authorities. But for the tigers, it often means there's fierce infighting, especially amongst the male tigers to control local areas. Each time a new male takes control, the young cubs of the vanquished are killed. The first year is the toughest in a cub's life. More than half of them are killed by another tiger or just do not survive in the harsh environment. As a succession of male tigers fight for domination, the tiger mumps have had to bear the brunt. Parwali's grip on her territory next to the river is loosening. Can she go on? The next morning brings a herd of elephants to the banks of the river.
drink and wash in the waters is the morning ritual for the group. There are nearly 50 elephants in the herd and they take their time. Only once they have left the banks to move on to the grasslands can Parwali make her move. A quick dip in the water and she surveys the area. She spots a family of sambar deer across the banks. instincts take over. She begins to wade her way across once more, careful to not draw any attention to herself. Fortunately for her, she has. A family of otters is swimming nearby. Suspicious of her intent, they track and keep an eye on her. The deer themselves are oblivious. They have yet to spot Parwali. But the otters begin to clamor and raise the alarm. Now the deer know that Parwali is around. Once she is spotted, the game is up. She doesn't even bother. She knows without the advantage of surprise, the deer can easily escape. Every good hunter knows when to call it quits. Parwali will have to go hungry for now. The otters do not let up till she has disappeared into the grass. But she will be back again. While things may be looking tough for this tiger mum, fate has been kinder to the others. It has been almost six months since we last saw Neelam and her cubs. Somehow, some way, she has kept them alive. Almost through sheer force of will, Feeling comfortable with her position, she's even allowing them to enjoy the early winter sun out in the open now. As they settle down on a rock to soak in the morning rays, all the animals in the area take note. These are no longer cubs but juveniles, strong enough to kill. A fox warily watches them from a distance.
but the cubs still need more practice before they can hunt independently. A couple of hunting expeditions with mom will sharpen their skills. Soon enough, they will be able to fend for themselves and Neelam's struggles will be over. She has successfully negotiated this tough year and kept her cubs safe. In the nearby jungles, Spotty has done well too. Her daughters are now old enough to embark on their independent journey in life. For now, she lets them stay in her territory and hunt. But soon they too will have to find a mate and carve out a new kingdom for themselves. Her job as a mother will finally be over, or will it? The chilly winter air has given way to a balmy spring breeze. The dull, dry brown forest landscape is wreathed in bright colors. Time to rejoice and rejuvenate. Spotty has also made the most of the past few months. She is happily nursing her new litter. This time, she has given birth to four cubs. For the next year or so, she will once again resume the role of devoted mother. Fiercely protective and ready to take on anyone who dares to come near them. The future of not just these cubs, but of the entire species depends on the determination and devotion of tiger moms like Spotty. A tiger mom can deliver up to 15 litters in her lifetime. Even with an average size of two cubs per litter, Spotty alone can rear over 30 tigers in her lifetime. Tiger mums like her are indeed crucial to the long-term survival of the species on our planet. And as long as its future is in such capable hands, we are sure to continue to see the tiger thriving in the wild for generations.